Welcome back to my channel, everyone. Three tips here. And what we're going to do is this is some gold-plated pins. And I think he says there's 10 pounds of it in there. And the yield should be about uh, almost an ounce of pure gold. So I'm going to order these. I'm going to give them as 1000 bucks. I'm going to order these, and we're going to find out exactly how much gold comes from this 10-pound lot of gold-plated pins. I received my box of pins today. Let's go ahead and open these up and have a look at it. 10 pounds will be roughly 4,500 grams. Let's see what we got in here. 4,674, so the weight looks good. I'm going to start this off as is uh, the procedure for any scrap material. I'm adding about a liter of distilled water. I'm adding some of the scrap pins to a melt dish here. And we're going to burn them. So I think they're pretty good. I'm just going to go ahead and dump these right on in now to the water. These things have excellent corrosion resistance. Now they're just now starting to discolor a little bit when I held the flame on there a little longer. These very clean pins. I'm thinking that uh, this entire batch is probably going to take about two of these bottles of nitric acid. To keep track, I'll just label this one as number one. That one is number two. I'm just going to add some of the nitric to the beaker to get this thing started. Since it's cold and we're just starting, what I think I'll do here is add another dose of nitric to it just to get things going. I don't want to put too much in right off the bat because it could create a boil over situation. This first group is boiling nicely. Went ahead and burnt the rest of these pins. Now we're gonna set this up on the heating plate. I'm gonna add some nitric acid from bottle number one. I had to split this up because there's too much, uh, too much material for just one of my beakers. Now what we'll do is this one's going pretty good. I'm going to try to add a little bit of uh, nitric acid here and see how this goes. I don't want it to uh, boil over too real hot. We got a lot of metal in there. So I'm just going to add it real slow here. See what happens. That's as far as I'm going to go. That was about uh, maybe 25 milliliters of nitric. I'm going to add a little bit more nitric here. Uh, you got to remember, this is my first time doing these pins. And I'm making this up as I go. All right, I got about 70 milliliters or so in there. These nitric additions are fairly docile. I'm going to turn the heat on for this beaker right here 
And what we'll do is add another shot of nitric acid to the one on the left over here. That's 100 milliliters. I don't know if I can get it all in there at once or not. Add it real slow. Sometimes nitric acid will take off on you. Delayed reaction if you put too much in there. All right, that's about half of what I measured out. I'm gonna add the rest of the nitric in here now. It seems to be doing okay. Not overly reactive. And I am starting to see just a few gold foils floating to the top of the uh, solution down there. So we're uh, definitely dissolving out the uh, copper base metal from these pins. I'm almost three hours into the reaction and I'm starting to see some gold foils floating on top here. And judging by what I'm feeling right here, we probably got another six, eight hours and a whole bunch more nitric. I've got about 150 milliliters of distilled water. I'm adding about 50 milliliters of nitric acid to it. And now we'll add that into our reaction to rehydrate it. Here we go. We can definitely see some gold foils floating on top of the reaction now. This one hasn't been on as long. I'll reach down in here and give this a stir, see what we got going on in here. And I can see some gold foils in this beaker as well. So we're progressing. I've been sitting here all night adding doses of nitric acid to each of these beakers. Only got just a little bit left in the bottom of this bottle. Here you can see there's plenty of metal left that must dissolve to release those gold foils. Gold foils are beginning to float on top of the suds. We started this at 3 p.m. It is currently almost 10 p.m. So it's taken almost seven hours to get this first bottle of nitric, bottle number one, 2.5 liters on top of those gold pins. And what we'll do now is start with bottle number two. I've got some kind of precipitate forming in that larger beaker back there. Not sure what that is. That's yeah, on the bottom of the beaker as well. Oh yeah, it does not look good in here. So I'm gonna add some water. Now some more nitric acid. We'll just keep going. I would discourage a new refiner from uh, trying to pick this as a place to start. I am seeing gold foils in the solution, uh, but this is not going to be an easy process here, I can tell you that right now. I'm going to have to rely heavily on my experience to uh, try to pull this off. This might take way more nitric acid than I uh, anticipated. And uh, this may have been something that would best be processed in a sulfuric acid stripping cell. 
I don't expect any precious metals in this solution. But I'm going to get a little bit on a piece of filter paper here. We're going to do a Stannis test just to make sure. And I don't see any kind of color change. All we have in solution is copper. We've got the dreaded blue precipitate down there. And that'll have a tendency to bind up and conceal our gold foils. For right now, what I'm going to do is take this copper waste and add it directly to my waste treatment bucket. It is day two, 3 p.m. It's been 24 hours since I started this project. This is our second beaker. You can see I've got the precipitate forming in this solution as well. And I'm gonna pour it off now into this spare beaker. And we're gonna start adding some uh, solution to these pins to get them moving along. I'm adding some distilled water Now we're going to add some nitric acid. Now the reaction's calmed down a little bit. Now we'll set this back up on some heat. Now we'll do a Stannis test on this liquid. Make sure not, we're not putting anything in solution. Because I intend to uh, discard this solution. And as you can see, no color change present, which tells me that all we have in solution here is copper. Okay, I was trying to figure out a way to save face, but I figured it's best just to go ahead and admit the mistakes as we go. And I did some research after the fact and found out, realized it takes one gallon of acid, of nitric acid, to dissolve two pounds of copper. And what I have here essentially is 10 pounds of copper with just traces of gold in it. And what I'm gonna have to do is put 10 pounds of copper in solution. That's gonna take five gallons of nitric acid and initially I said that this process would take me about two bottles two 2.5 liter bottles to complete this and after recalculating and doing the research after the fact that's my fault uh, it's gonna take 10 2.5 liter bottles of nitric acid to dissolve this 10 pounds of copper. Some folks may say, three tips that's excessive, you should call the experiment and stop right now. But we still wanna find out exactly how much gold 
those 10 pounds of pins have in them. And the only way to do it is expend five gallons of acid to dissolve all the copper. So in the name of science, in the name of discovery, we're gonna push forward. I have the nitric acid to do it. And so we're gonna push forward and complete this experiment in its entirety. I just dumped another beaker full of waste copper solution into my waste treatment bucket. So I'm gonna add some more pieces of angle iron here to make sure that we get all of the copper cemented out of this waste solution. Here we go, we're gonna start on bottle number three of the nitric acid. This is a bit like processing gold-filled scrap. That's the process we're using here. Uh, the main difference is there's a lot more copper and a lot less gold here. All right, I added too much nitric there and it's acting like it wants to boil over on me. And I found that if I can catch it in time, what I need to do is just add some water and it'll knock that head of foam down by diluting the acid. That reaction is calmed down now. I'm gonna cover it up and we'll move it back up on the heat back here. I'm going to do the same thing with the second beaker back here and just pour off the copper solution into this waste beaker. I'm adding some distilled water here. We're going to put in some nitric acid out of bottle number three for this experiment. Careful, don't want to add too much. This is gonna be a waste solution in this beaker right here, copper only. Now we're gonna put this back up on the heat in the back back here. This nitric drip is working very nice. It 
And you can see we've had this in here for about a half an hour and got most of the acid dripped down into the reaction beaker. When I get done, what I'll do is I'll set the drip up and uh, drip some acid into beaker number two. I'll just have to add some manually over here to this one. This one's dripping in and going real good, so I'm happy with that. Now, once I get most of the copper out of this one, I'll probably add the two together and make one batch. This is day four of the experiment. Everything has been allowed to cool off. And what we're gonna do here is pour off this copper solution, and get rid of it. Here's a look at the gold foils. And we've still got quite a bit of copper pieces in there that need to be dissolved out. I'm adding some distilled water. This is bottle number four of our nitric acid. It's about right here. I'm just gonna add about 500 milliliters right on in. Starting to see some good results here. Let's see if I can pull some of this material up. I still got some copper to, that needs to be dissolved, as you can see there. But the gold foils are looking fairly spectacular here. This is the fifth nitric acid bottle. 
that I've committed to this uh, experiment so far. I'm going to add a little bit of the nitric acid in here now. It's day five of the experiment, and we're looking pretty good here. The gold foils are beginning to float on top of the solution. Everything's cold right now. I'm gonna siphon it off into my waste bucket here. It's designated for silver refining waste. It's just copper. And if you look here, I've used five bottles. This is a full one. This is the one we'll be using today but I've used five bottles of nitric acid so far in this experiment. Now we can get some room in here, get rid of this hot plate. We're going to combine the material into a single beaker. We're going to start on bottle number six of our nitric acid. We're going to continue to get the rest of the copper out of here. So we're just going to keep hitting this with nitric acid until we get all those copper pins dissolved and leave just the gold foils behind. I'm adding a little bit of distilled water. And now we're going to set this up on the heat and continue dissolving out the copper. I'm adding dilute nitric acid here. It's 150 milliliters of distilled water with 50 milliliters of nitric acid. And I just add it slowly, a little bit at a time. And I'm noticing now that there's very little fume production. Getting pure gold from any source is never quick and easy. Uh, this fact, coupled with its scarcity and the characteristics of pure gold, is what makes it such a highly valuable metal. If you look at this chart up here, there are only two elements that are suitable to be used as a store of value or monetary metals. Everything else will corrode, explode, escape as a gas, or kill you. Gold and silver are the only two metals that are suitable to be used as monetary metals. I'm going to pull this off the heat. Fume production has ceased. What we're going to do is add some distilled water to cool this down and dilute it. So 
Now what I'm going to do is pour this off into this spare beaker. There may be a few gold foils that go and get poured over, but uh, most of it's settled out on the bottom. But uh, my experience with this stuff is that it looks like there's a ton when it's in the beaker. And then when we get it out to uh, dissolve it and get it precipitated, it's going to be a totally different story. Coming along here for folks who like to say I should have done this or I should have done that. You got to remember I'm uh, making this up as I go here. Here's a look at the gold foils. Rinsing the remaining copper pins in here trying to get all of the uh, gold foils rinsed off of those pins and down into this filter. Rinsing the rest of the foils and the copper pins down into this one liter beaker. Make them easier to handle. All right, I found the best way to go about this is fill the jar full of water and then take my tweezers down here and grab the uh, copper pins and just kind of rinse the gold foils off and then remove them. Keep doing that over and over. I get pretty much almost all of the gold. A little bit's clinging to the copper pins still. The recovery process is complete. Here is our recovered gold foils. Here's the copper that's left over. It's got a little bit of gold in it, but uh, I didn't feel like expending another two bottles of nitrate to get all that to go into solution. So now what we're gonna do, the recovery process is complete. Now we'll begin the refining process. We'll begin the refining process by adding our recovered gold foils to this beaker carefully. Come on. There we go. Notice that there's nothing left in the funnel. Let me get these foils down into the beaker. I'm adding hydrochloric acid. I'm gonna add some sulfuric acid precipitate out any lead that may be present. I'm going to turn the stir bar on, add a little bit of heat, 
And now I'm going to shoot some nitric acid in here. And we're going to start dissolving these gold foils with some aqua regia. The foils are very thin, should dissolve fairly quickly. Let's pull this down off the heat now. And I'm going to reach down in here and get a little bit of this solution on a piece of filter paper. We're going to test this with stannous chloride, just verify that we've got gold in solution. There you see it, that dark stain means we've got plenty of gold in solution. I'm going to add a few ice cubes to cool the solution down a little bit. While I was waiting for the gold to pull through the filter, I separated the rest of the uh, copper pins from the remaining gold foils. Looks like a lot, but there's only probably less than a tenth of a gram of gold there. I'm going to take the filtered gold solution now and transfer it into a beaker. We're going to precipitate out the pure gold now. Here we go. Here goes the first spoon of sodium metabisulfite to precipitate out the pure gold. Here we go. Second spoon. And the third. four and number five this should be enough to cr cause all the gold to come out of solution now get some of the solution on a piece of filter paper let's do a stannis test make sure we've got all the gold precipitated as you can see by that lack of stain on that piece of filter paper, all the gold has precipitated. We're almost home. I'm going to pour this waste solution off. Here's our gold down here. It's a respectable amount. Pour this waste solution off now. Get rid of it. All right, I'm liking what I'm seeing here. This looks like a pretty decent amount of gold in here. Not bad. For all that work that we put in on that. I'm not really worried about going for high purity here. What I'm gonna do is collect the gold now in a filter and we're going to get it into a melt dish so that I can get a yield on it. Here's our gold powder. And what we'll do now is get it down into this melt dish. Now we'll take it over here to the melt table and we'll start a quick melt to get a yield.
get the flux off with this dilute sulfuric acid solution all right this thing turned out to be a beauty let's rinse it off over here right quick very nice little chunk of pure gold got a nice finish to it came out much nicer than I expected all right five days and five bottles of nitric acid later we've got us a nice chunk of pure gold came out uh, way better than I thought it was this is the remaining foils that I got from those pins it's probably about a tenth of a gram here so let's see what we got for a weight on this thing 22.5 grams of pure gold much better than I was expecting all right this will conclude the gold plated pins recovery and refining video thank you for watching